So I'm going to walk through how I created this shot from Dune Part 2 that I made with Blender and After Effects. This video won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more of a walkthrough of what I have already done. So the first step is to take a look at the reference from the movie. Here is the shot that I recreated. Now the first thing I noticed about this shot is the long focal length. This shot uses a telephoto lens, so I needed to match that in my shot. I used a focal length of 505 millimeters. Now the three main elements I need for the scene are Polytrades, the sandworm, and the sand dunes. For Polytrades, I found this model of a Fremen on Sketchfab that will work just fine for this shot. This model doesn't look a lot like Paul, but Paul will be small enough in the shot that it shouldn't matter. We will then import this model into Mixamo and use the Auto Rig tool and end up with... Okay, that is not what we want. We're going to have to make a workaround for this. We're going to import this model into Blender first and then hide the cloak. We will then export the remaining character as an FBX. We will then import this new FBX back into Mixamo. I imported this model into Mixamo and then selected a walking animation that I liked. I then exported it into an FBX format and then imported that into my Blender scene. We will unhide the cloak and parent this to our new rig. That will work well enough for us. So here is a quick overview of what the Blender scene looks like. I have it split into three different sections, the foreground, the midground, and the background. The foreground has a small sand dune that is very close to the camera. The midground has just the Fremen model that we just imported. And the background has a larger dune with the worm coming out of it. I placed all of these objects very far away from each other, so when you look down the lens of the camera, it looks like this. Now let's go back to the Fremen model. I modified the skin tone of the model to closer match Paul Atreides. I then used weight paint to create a particle system for the hair and added hair dynamics. I messed with the stiffness settings to make the hair stay more upright. You definitely don't need this detail, but I thought it added to the overall look. Next I simulated the cape. I created a vertex group for the part of the cape I want to stick to the body and added that vertex group to the pin group. I then added a wind force and tried different strengths until I got a simulation I was happy with. Now it looks very bad from the back, but it only needs to look good from the camera angle. Now onto the sandworm. I could not find a model that I liked, so I decided to model it myself. It has been a while since I made this project, so I don't remember exactly how I modeled it, but I will do my best. I think I started out with a cylinder and extruded one side to make the worm very long. I then added many loop cuts along the body. I then added a solidify modifier to add some thickness and applied it. I then used proportional editing to make the shape of the mouth. I then remeshed it for some reason. To rig it, I added a bone, stretched it out in edit mode, and subdivided it a bunch. I then parented the worm to the rig using automatic weights. I also added a displacement modifier and used a cloud texture to drive the displacement. This just helps add some variation to the look of the worm's body. For the teeth, I'll be honest, I don't remember exactly what I did. But I started out by modeling one tooth like this, and then I think I used an array modifier to make a row of teeth. I then added a curve modifier to get them into the shape of a circle, and then parented them to a bone in the rig. To animate the worm, I looked closely at the reference video and tried to match the worm's movement. 
I use pose mode to rotate the bones individually to try to match the path of the worm. This may take some tweaking. Next is texturing the worm. Here is my material node tree for the worm. It is much simpler than it looks. It is just a mixture of different noise textures for the color, roughness, and displacement sockets. I just made different noise textures with different scales, colors, and roughness values and mix them together with math nodes. There is really no right or wrong way to do this. Next is creating the dunes. I used a landscape mesh to create the foreground and the background. For the foreground dune, I used a rocky ground material that I found on Blender Kit. And for the background dune, I used a procedural sand texture that I also found on Blender Kit. I then added an HDRI I found on Polyhaven for the lighting and reduced the saturation and brightness. So far, everything should look like this. The next step is rendering. For rendering, I rendered the foreground, midground, and background separately by adding everything into separate collections labeled accordingly. Now comes the compositing part of the process, which I feel really sells the effect. Once you import your render layers, it's time to add the sand bursts. For this, I used a few different dirt blast elements from Footage Crate, but any stock footage of dirt or dust should work. I want the sand bursts to come from in front and behind the worm. So I duplicated the background layer and made a mask of where I wanted the sand to come from. I then put some of the dirt elements between these two background layers, like so. I then added dirt elements in front and behind both background layers. In the reference video, this is a very large sand explosion, so it looks as if the sand is moving very slowly. So I slowed down these dirt elements to make them four times slower and used optical flow to smooth them out. I timed each dirt element to come on screen when the worm emerges and when the worm crashes down at the end. Next, I use Lumetri Color to adjust the exposure of each layer to match the reference. I added a camera lens blur on top of everything and pre-composed all the layers. The next step was to add heat distortion. I got this idea from Press Record and will attach his video in the description. He explains the process much better than I can, but I will give a brief overview of what I did. I started by creating a chromatic aberration effect. I duplicated the composition three times and added a shift channels effect to each layer. I kept either the green, red, or the blue channel on for each layer and set the blending mode to screen. I then moved the top two compositions a few pixels to either side and scaled up all of the comps to 101%. You should be left with this chromatic aberration effect. I then pre-composed all three color comps. The next thing we are going to do is add a fractal noise layer that will drive the distortion. I created a new solid and added the fractal noise effect, switched from basic to dynamic progressive, and from linear to spline. I animated the evolution of the effect with a time times 3000 function. The bright areas of this noise texture will create displacement while the dark areas will not affect the footage. I tweaked the brightness and contrast, as well as duplicated this noise texture twice, changing the scale value and setting the layers to overlay. This was just to add some variation to the size of the distortions. I then pre-composed these three layers. I then set the track mat of the RGB pre-comp to this noise comp and set the mat to Luma. Now the chromatic aberration will only show up on the white areas of the noise comp. Next I added an adjustment layer and added the displacement map effect and the compound blur effect. I set the displacement source to the noise comp and added a value of 8. For the compound blur effect, I set the source to the noise comp and set the value to 7. 
Now, the parts that are distorted will also get blurry. Lastly, I tweaked the brightness, reduced the saturation to 80%, and added a vignette. And that's about it. Here is the final result once again. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was somewhat informative, and let me know if you would like tutorials for anything else in the future. Thanks.